Alone by Edgar Allan Poe Read for LibriVox.org by Tonku Hunor From childhood's hour I have not been as others were, I have not seen as others saw, I could not bring my passions from a common spring, From the same source I have not taken my sorrow, I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still, from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold. From the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, From the thunder and the storm, And the cloud that took the form, When the rest of heaven was blue, Of a demon in my view. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ashes in the Sea by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King NMF Whither, with blue and pleading eyes, Whither, with cheeks that held the light Of winter's dawn in cloudless skies, Evadne was thy flight. Such as a sister's was thy brow, Thy hair seemed fallen from the moon, Part of its radiance as now, Of shifting tide and dune. Did autumn's grieving lure thee hence, Or silence ultimate beguile? Ever our things of consequence Awakened but thy smile. Is it with thee that ocean takes A stranger sorrow to its tone? With thee the star of evening wakes, More beautiful, more lone? For wave and hill and sky betray a subtle tinge and touch of thee. Thy shadow lingers in the day, thy voice in winds to be. Beauty, hast thou discovered her? By deeper seas no moon's control. What stars of magic now to stir thy swift and willful soul? Or may thy heart no more forget the grievous world that once was home, That here, where love awaits thee yet, Thou seemest yet to roam. For most, far wandering, I guess thy witchery on the haunted mind, In valleys of thy loneliness, Made clean with ocean's wind. And most thy presence here seems told, A waif of elemental deeps, when, at its vigils unconsoled, Some night of winter weeps. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ballad for Gloom by Ezra Pound Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug for God, our God, is a gallant foe that playeth behind the veil. I have loved my God as a child at heart that seeketh deep bosoms for rest. I have loved my God as made to man, but lo, this thing is best, to love your God as a gallant foe that plays behind the veil, to meet your God as the night winds meet beyond Arcturus's pale. I have played with God for a woman, I have staked with my God for truth. I have lost to my God as a man, clear-eyed, his dice be not of ruth. For I am made as a naked blade, but he ye this thing in sooth. Who loseth to God as man to man, shall win at the turn of the game. I have drawn my blade where the lightnings meet, but the ending is the same. Who loseth to God as the sword blades lose, shall win at the end of the game. For God, our God, is a gallant foe that playeth behind the veil, whom God deigns not to overthrow, 
hath need of triple mail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cultured Constable by C. J. Dennis. Read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles. The Cultured Constable. Five nights are gone, I lay at rest on my suburban couch. My trousers on the bedpost hung, red gold within their pouch. The twin god's law and order seemed to me all powerful as I dreamed. My life was stayed, my rates were paid, and peace was in my mind, nor wrecked I of unruly men to evil deeds inclined, strange primal atavistic men who shock the peaceful citizen. But all the same by stealth he came, a man of vile intent. What cared he that my life was pure, or that I paid my rent? He willed to violate my shrine, for household treasures that were mine. With purpose vile and with a file my window he attacked, a stealthy scratch upon the catch awoke me to the fact. Softly with sudden fear amazed, a corner of the blind I raised. I saw his face, oh that a man his manhood should degrade, and seek to rob, I checked a sob, except in honest trade. A predatory face I saw, that showed no reverence for law. With whirring head I slid from bed, crept from my peaceful couch, forsook my trousers hanging there, red gold within their pouch. Out through my chamber door I fled, and up the hallway softly sped. Into the murky night I stole to seek a certain cop, whose forthright feet patrol the beat, a stone's throw from my shop. In my pyjama suit went I, across the moon dark clouds swept by. I saw him draped upon a post, like someone in a swoon. His buttons gleamed what time the clouds released the troubled moon. He gazed upon the changing sky, a strange light in his dreamy eye. Now haste thee, cop, I called aloud, and seized him by the arm. There is a wretch without my house, who bodes my treasure harm. Toward the sky he waved a hand, and answered, Ain't that background grand? Nay, gentle John, said I, attend, A thief my goods and gold, Seeks to purloin, Go seize the man, Before the trail is cold. Those spies against the sky, said he, So charged with beauty, are to me. I give the man in charge, I cried, He is on evil bent, He seeks all of its treasured art, To strip my tenement. He answered, as one in a dream, Ain't that a bonza colour scheme? Them tortured clouds again the moon, the foolish cop pursued, Remind me of some whistler thing, but I prefer the nude. Said I, arrest this man of vice, said he, the nude is very nice. My pants, cried I, unguarded lie, beside my peaceful couch, My second best pair, with the stripes, red gold within their pouch, Thieves, murder, burglars, fire, cried I, sighed he, O oh, spies against the sky. Then in my pink pyjamas clad, I danced before his eyes, In anger impotent I sought his ear with savage cries. He pushed me from him with a moan, Go away, he said, you're out of tone. Why do I pay my rates, I yelled, the wages that you draw? Come, I demand, good cop, demand protection from the law. You're out of drawing too, said he. Still, suppose I'd better go and see. I guided him adown the street, and now he stayed to view the changing sky, and now he paused before some aspect new. And thus at length we gained my gate. Too late, I cried, alas, too late. Too late to save my household gods, my treasures rich and rare. My ransacked cupboards yawned agape, my sideboard too was bare. And there beside my tumbled couch, my trousers lay with rifled pouch. Now haste thee, cop, I called again, let not thy footsteps lag. The thief cannot be far away, haste to regain the swag. His arms I saw him outward fling, he moaned, where did you get that thing? 
With startled stare I looked to where his anguished gaze was bent, and hanging by my wardrobe saw a Christmas supplement, a thing I'd got for little price and framed because I thought it nice. It was a coloured supplement, the frame I thought was neat. It showed a dog, a little maid, whose face was very sweet. A kitten and some odds and ends, the title rather apt was Friends. A cursed Philistine, I heard the strange policeman hiss. Between his teeth, O oh, wretched man, was I hired here for this? O oh, goth, suburbanite, repent, tear down that Christmas supplement. And as athwart my burgled pain the tortured storm-rack raced, that man of Coptic culture grew all limp and ashen-faced. Then to my window-seat he crept, and bowed his head, and wept, and wept. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Disinterred Warrior by William Cullen Bryant Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Gather him to his grave again, And solemnly and softly lay Beneath the verdure of the plain The warrior's scattered bones away. Pay the deep reverence, taught of old, The homage of man's heart to death, Nor dare to trifle with the mould Once hallowed by the Almighty's breath. The soul hath quickened every part, That remnant of a martial brow, Those ribs that held the mighty heart, That strong arm, strong no longer now. Spare them, each mouldering relic, spare of god's own image let them rest till not a trace shall speak of where the awful likeness was impressed for he was fresher from the hand that formed of earth the human face and to the elements did stand in nearer kindred than our race in many a flood to madness tossed in many a storm has been his path he hid him not from heat or frost, but met them, and defied their wrath. Then they were kind, the forests here, rivers and stiller waters, paid a tribute to the net and spear of the red ruler of the shade. Fruits on the woodland branches lay, roots in the shaded soil below. The stars looked forth to teach his way. The still earth warned him of the foe, a noble race. But they are gone, with their old forests wide and deep, and we have built our homes upon fields where their generations sleep. Their fountains slake our thirst at noon, upon their fields our harvest waves, our lovers woo beneath their moon. Then let us spare, at least, their graves. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Elegy in a Country Churchyard by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Tom Bombadil. The men that worked for England, they have their graves at home. And birds and beasts of England about their cross can roam. But they that fought for England, following a falling star, Alas, alas for England, they have their graves afar. And they that rule in England, in stately conclave met, Alas, alas for England, they have no graves as yet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Famam Librosque Cano by Ezra Pound. Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug. Your songs? Oh, the little mothers will sing them in the twilight. 
and when the night shrinketh the kiss of the dawn that loves and kills. What time the swallow fills her note, the little rabbit folk that some call children, such as are up and wide will laugh your verses to each other, pulling on their shoes for the day's business, serious child business that the world laughs at and grows stale. Such is the tale, part of it, of thy song life. Mine? A book is known by them that read the same. Thy public in my screed is listed. Well, some score years hence, behold mine audience, as we had seen him yesterday. Scrawny, bespectacled, out at heels, such an one as the world feels a sort of curse against its guzzling, and its age-lasting wallow for red greed, and yet, full speed, though it should run for its own getting, will turn aside to sneer at, cause he hath no coin, no will to snatch the aftermath of mammon. Such an one as women draw away from for the tobacco ashes scattered on his coat, and sith his throat show raises unfamiliarity and three days beard. Such an one picking a ragged backless copy from the stall, too cheap for cataloguing. Loquitur. Ah, eh, hey, the strange rare name. Ah, eh, hey, he must be rare if even I have not. And lost mid-page. Such age as his pardons the habit. He analyzes form and thought to see how I escaped immortality. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. February by George Milner. Read for LibriVox.org by Garth Burton. O oh, Prince of Morning, hear our praise for all the joy of lengthening days. Now, all about in yonder wood, the tender green things are in bud each twinkling like an elfin's eye from frozen clods and branches dry primrose and colt's foot one or two are here again with blossoms new and dimly on the orchard floor fresh grasses glimmering as of yore birds flutter to and fro in pairs the sunlight flickers unawares and mid the drifting clouds the blue sweet sky comes faintly struggling through still shorter grows the baleful night whose shapeless dreams our souls affright and swifter on the world is born the glad enfranchisement of morn grey twilight lingers in the trees a little longer night by night and birds with bolder melodies lend unto us their own delight and something stolen from the gloom, and something given unto the day, bids in our hearts a whisper come. Lo, now the spring is on her way, and hope arises, for we know her smile shall melt the frost of woe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Future Life by William Cullen Bryant Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk How shall I know thee in the sphere which keeps the disembodied spirits of the dead, when all of thee that time could wither sleeps and perishes among the dust we tread? For I shall feel the sting of ceaseless pain if there I meet thy gentle presence not nor hear the voice i love nor read again in thy serenest eyes the tender thought will not thy own meek heart demand me there that heart whose fondest throbs to me were given my name on earth was ever in thy prayer shall it be banished from thy tongue in heaven in meadows fanned by heaven's life-breathing wind in the resplendence of that glorious sphere 
and larger movements of the unfettered mind wilt thou forget the love that joined us here the love that lived through all the stormy past and meekly with my harsher nature bore and deeper grew and tenderer to the last shall it expire with life and be no more a happier lot than mine and larger light await thee there for thou hast bowed thy will in cheerful homage to the rule of right and lovest all and renderest good for ill for me the sordid cares in which i dwell shrink and consume my heart as heat the scroll and wrath has left its scar that fire of hell has left its frightful scar upon my soul yet though thou wearest the glory of the sky wilt thou not keep the same beloved name the same fair thoughtful brow and gentle eye lovelier in heaven's sweet climate yet the same shalt thou not teach me in that calmer home the wisdom that i learned so ill in this the wisdom which is love till i become thy fit companion in that land of bliss end of poem this recording is in the public domain Gerontion by T. S. Eliot. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Thou hast nor youth nor age, but as it were an after dinner sleep, dreaming of both. Here am I, an old man in a dry month, being read to by a boy, waiting for rain. I was neither at the hot gates, nor fought in the warm rain, nor knee-deep in the salt marsh, heaving a cutlass, bitten by flies, fought. My house is a decayed house, and the Jew squats on the window-sill, the owner, spawned in some estaminet of Antwerp, blistered in Brussels, patched and peeled in London. The goat coughs at night in the field overhead. Rocks, moss, stone crop, iron, murds. The woman keeps the kitchen, makes tea, sneezes at evening, poking the peevish gutter. I, an old man, a dull head among windy spaces. Signs are taken for wonders. We would see a sign, the word within a word unable to speak a word, swaddled with darkness. In the uvescence of the year came Christ the tiger, in depraved May, dogwood and chestnut, flowering Judas, to be eaten, to be divided, to be drunk among whispers by Mr. Silvero with caressing hands, at Limoges, who walked all night in the next room, by Hakagawa bowing among the Titians, by madame de tornquist in the dark room shifting the candles fraulein von kulp who turned in the hall one hand on the door vacant shuttles weave the wind i have no ghosts an old man in a draughty house under a windy knob after such knowledge what forgiveness Think now, history has many cunning passages, contrived corridors and issues, deceives with whispering ambitions, guides us by vanities. Think now, she gives when our attention is distracted, and what she gives, gives with such supple confusions that the giving famishes the craving, gives too late what's not believed in, or if still believed in memory only reconsidered passion gives too soon into weak hands what thought can be dispensed with till the refusal propagates a fear think neither fear nor courage saves us unnatural vices are fathered by our heroism 
Virtues are forced upon us by our impudent crimes. These tears are shaken from the wrath-bearing tree. The tiger springs in the new year, us he devours. Think at last we have not reached conclusion when I stiffen in a rented house. Think at last I have not made this show purposelessly and it is not by any consultation of the backward devils. I would meet you upon this honestly. I that was near your heart was removed therefrom to lose beauty in terror, terror in inquisition. I have lost my passion. Why should I need to keep it, since what is kept must be adulterated? I have lost my sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. How should I use it for your closer contact? These, with a thousand small deliberations, protract the profit of their chilled delirium, excite the membrane when the sense is cooled, with pungent sauces, multiply variety in a wilderness of mirrors. What will a spider do? Suspend its operations? Will the weevil delay? De Balioche, Fresca, Mrs. Camel, whirl beyond the circuit of the shuddering bear in fractured atoms, gull against the wind, in the windy straits of Belle Isle or running on the horn, white feathers in the snow, the gulf claims, and an old man driven by the trades to a sleepy corner. Tenants of the house, thoughts of a dry brain in a dry season. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Human Frailty by William Cowper, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Weak and irresolute is man, the purpose of today woven with pains into his plan, tomorrow rends away. The bow well bent and smart the spring, vice seems already slain, but passion rudely snaps the string, and it revives again. Some foe to his upright intent finds out his weaker part, virtue engages his assent, but pleasure wins his heart. Tis here the folly of the wise, though all his arts we view, and while his tongue the charge denies, his conscience owns it true. Bound on a voyage of awful length, and dangers little known, a stranger to superior strength, man vainly trusts his own. But oars alone can ne'er prevail to reach the distant coast. The breath of heaven must swell the sail, or all the toil is lost. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Tempore Senectutis by Ezra Pound Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug For we are old, and the earth passion dieth. We have watched him die a thousand times. When he wanes, an old wind crieth. We are old, and passion hath died for us a thousand times, but we grew never weary. Memory faileth, as the lotus loved chimes sink into fluttering of wind, but we grow never weary, for we are old. The strange night wonder of your eyes dies not, though passion flieth along the star-fields of Arcturus, and is no more unto our hands. My lips are cold, and yet we twain are never weary, and the strange night wonder is upon us. The leaves hold our wonder in their flutterings. The wind fills our mouths with strange words for our wonder that grows not old. The moth hour of our day is upon us, holding the dawn. 
there is strange night wonder in our eyes because the moth hour leadeth the dawn as a maiden holding her fingers the rosy slender fingers of the dawn he saith red spears bore the warrior dawn of old strange love hast thou forgotten the red spears of the dawn the penance of the morning she saith nay i remember but now cometh the dawn and the moth hour together with him softly for we are old end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Lay of the Lover's Friend by William Edmonston Atoon Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio I would all womankind were dead, or banished o'er the sea, For they have been a bitter plague these last six weeks to me. It is not that I'm touched myself, for that I do not fear, no female face hath shown me grace for many a bygone year but tis the most infernal bore of all the bores i know to have a friend who's lost his heart a short time ago whene'er we steam it to blackwall or down to greenwich run to quaff the pleasant cider cup and feed on fish and fun or climb the slopes of richmond hill to catch a breath of air then for my sins he straight begins to rave about his fare oh tis the most tremendous bore of all the bores i know to have a friend who's lost his heart a short time ago in vain you pour into his ear your own confiding grief in vain you claim his sympathy in vain you ask relief in vain you try to rouse him by joke repartee or quiz his soul replies a burning sigh and what a mind it is o oh, lord it is the greatest bore of all the bores i know to have a friend who's lost his heart a short time ago I've heard her thoroughly described a hundred times, I'm sure, and all the while I've tried to smile and patiently endure. He waxes strong upon his pangs and potters o'er his grog, and still I say in a playful way, Why, you're a lucky dog! But oh, it is the heaviest bore of all the bores I know to have a friend who's lost his heart a short time ago i really wish he'd do like me when i was young and strong i formed a passion every week but never kept it long but he has not the sportive mood that always rescued me and so i would all women could be banished o'er the sea for tis the most egregious bore of all the bores i know to have a friend who's lost his heart a short time ago. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Liberty by James Allen. Read for LibriVox.org by Andani Takati www.jamesellenwisdom.com The unwise say, Our sufferings are unjust, Our pains and woes rise from the scattered dust. Of sinful ancestors we are not free, Our fathers robbed us of our liberty. By what they did, and we are weak and frail, because they erred, they fell, and we must fail. Our drunkenness comes from their love of wine, our lusts 
their revels made, and we divine. Our manifold diseases, by the ways in which they walked, and as they trod the maze, made by their feet, so we must likewise tread, for we are bound and driven by the dead. Thy sins are thine, O man, and from thy deeds, thy life with all its weal and woe proceeds. By self and not by others, thou art bound in thine own will and heart the root is found of all thy lack of peace ope thou thine eyes leave the dead past and look within be wise make pure thy heart and thou wilt make thy life rich sweet and beautiful unmarred by strife god while thy mind and noble strong and free nothing shall harm disturb or conquer thee for all thy foes are in thy heart and mind there also thy salvation thou wilt find mind is the master power that moulds and makes and man is mind and evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills brings forth a thousand joys a thousand ills he thinks in secret and it comes to pass environment is but his looking-glass in his own heart he fosters dark desires or strives for good or loftily aspires in his own life he reaps what he has sown, or pain or peace he garners in his own. Thou man that bowest to heredity, know this, the law of life is liberty. By thought we rise, by thought we fall, by thought we stand or go, all destiny is wrought by its swift potency and he who stands master of thought and his desires commands willing and weaving thoughts of love and might shapes his high end in truth's unerring light end of poem this recording is in the public domain Life's Mirror by Madeline S. Bridges Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio There are loyal hearts, there are spirits brave, There are souls that are pure and true. Then give to the world the best that you have, And the best will come back to you. Give love and love to your life will flow, a strength in your utmost need. Have faith, and a score of hearts will show their faith in your work and deed. Give truth, and your gift will be paid in kind, and honor will honor meet. And the smile which is sweet will surely find a smile that is just as sweet. Give sorrow and pity to those who mourn. You will gather in flowers again the scattered seeds from your thought outborn, though the sowing seemed but vain. For life is the mirror of king and slave. Tis just what we are and do. Then give to the world the best that you have, and the best will come back to you and a poem this recording is in the public domain long i sought thee by james allen 
GratefulLibriVox.org by Andani Takati www.jamesallenwisdom.com Long I sought thee, Spirit holy, Master Spirit, meek and lowly, Sought thee with a silent sorrow, Brooding o'er the woes of men, Vainly sought thy yoke of meekness, Neath the weight of woe and weakness, Finding not, yet in thy failing, Seeking o'er and o'er again. In unrest and doubt and sadness dwelt I, yet I knew thy gladness, waited somewhere, somewhere greeted torn and soaring hearts like mine, knew that somehow I should find thee, living sin and woe behind me, and at last thy love would bid me enter into rest divine. Hatred, mockery, and reviling Scorched my seeking soul, defiling That which should have been thy temple Wherein thou shouldst move and dwell Praying, striving, hoping, calling Suffering, sorrowing in my falling Still I sought thee Groping blindly in the gloomy depths of hell and I sought thee till I found thee, and the dark powers all around me fled and left me silent, peaceful, brooding o'er thy holy themes. From within me and without me fled they when I ceased to doubt thee, and I found thee in thy glory, mighty master of my dreams. Yea, I found thee, spirit holy. Beautiful and pure and lowly, Found thy joy and peace and gladness, Found thee in thy house of rest, Found thy strength and love and meekness, And my pain and woe and weakness, Left me, and I walked the pathway Trodden only by the blessed. End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Mise en scène by Amy Lowell Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King When I think of you, beloved, I see a smooth and stately garden With parterres of gold and crimson tulips And bursting lilac leaves. There is a low-lipped basin in the midst, where a statue of veined cream marble perpetually pours water over her shoulder from a rounded urn. When the wind blows, the water stream blows before it and spatters into the basin with a light tinkling, and your shawl, the colour of red violets, flares out behind you in great curves like the swirling draperies of a painted Madonna. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Noiseless Patient Spider by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp A Noiseless Patient Spider I marked where on a little promontory it stood, isolated, marked how to explore the vacant, vast surrounding, it launched forth filament, 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 out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. And you, O oh my soul, where you stand, surrounded, detached, in measureless oceans of space, ceaselessly musing, venturing, throwing, seeking the spheres to connect them, till the bridge you will need be formed, till the ductile anchor hold, till the gossamer thread you fling catch somewhere, O oh my soul. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Philosopher by Edna St. Vincent Millay Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle February 2015 And what are you that, wanting you, I should be kept awake As many nights as there are days With weeping for your sake and what are you that, missing you, as many days as crawl, I should be listening to the wind and looking at the wall? I know a man that's a braver man, and twenty men as kind. And what are you that you should be the one man in my mind? Yet women's ways are witless ways, as any sage will tell. And what am I that I should love so wisely and so well? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Practice and Perception by James Allen. Read for LibriVox.org by Andani Takati www.jamesallenwisdom.com Questioning life and destiny and truth, I saw the dark and labyrinthian sphinx, who spake to me the strange and wondrous thing. Concealment only lies in blinded eyes, and God alone can see the form of God. I sought to solve this hidden mystery, vainly by paths of blindness and of pain, but when I found the way of love and peace, concealment ceased, and I was blind no more. Then saw I God, in with the eyes of God. End of Practice and Perception. This recording is in the public domain. Robin Hood by John Keats. Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil. To a friend. No, those days are gone away, and the hours are old and grey. And the minutes buried all under the downtrodden pall of the leaves of many years. Many times have winter's shears, frozen north and chilling east, sounded tempests to the feast of the forest's whispering fleeces, since man knew nor rent nor leases. No, the bugle sounds no more, and the twanging bow no more. Silent is the ivory shrill, past the heath and up the hill. There is no mid-forest laugh, where lone echo gives the half, To some white, amazed to hear, chesting deep in forest drear. On the fairest time of June, you may go with sun or moon, Or the seven stars to light you, or the polar ray to write you, But you never may behold little John or Robin bold, Never one of all the clan thrumming on an empty can, Some old hunting ditty while he doth his green way beguile, To fair hostess merriment Down beside the pasture trent. For he left a merry tale, Messenger for spicy ale. Gone the merry Morristin, Gone the song of Gamelin, Gone the tough-belted outlaw, Idling in the greener shore. All are gone away and past, And if Robin should be cast, Sudden from his turfed grave, And if Marian should have, once again her forest days, she would weep, and he would craze. He would swear for all his oaks, fallen beneath the dockyard strokes, have rotted on the briny seas. She would weep that her wild bees sang not to her. Strange, that honey can't be got without hard money. So it is, yet let us sing, 
Honor to the old bowstring, Honor to the bugle horn, Honor to the woods unshorn, Honor to the Lincoln green, Honor to the archer keen, Honor to tight little John and the horse he rode upon, Honor to bold Robin Hood, sleeping in the underwood, Honor to Maid Marian and to all the Sherwood clan, Though their days have hurried by, let us to a burden try. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spider and the Fly by Mary Howitt. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. An Epilogue, a new version of an old story. Will you walk into my parlor? said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair, and I've many curious things to show when you are there. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. To ask me is in vain, for who goes up your winding stair can ne'er come down again. I'm sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed? said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around, the sheets are fine and thin, and if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh, no, no, said the little fly, for I've often heard it said they never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed. Said the cunning spider to the fly, Dear friend, what can I do to prove the warm affection I've always felt for you? I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? Oh, no, no, said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry, and I do not wish to see. Sweet creature, said the spider, you're witty and you're wise. How handsome are your gauzy wings, how brilliant are your eyes. I've a little looking-glass upon my parlor shelf. If you'll step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I thank you, gentle sir, she said, for what you're pleased to say, and bidding you good morning now. I'll call another day. The spider turned him round about and went into his den, for well he knew the silly fly would soon come back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly, and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. Then he came out to his door again, and merrily did sing, Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with the pearl and silver wing, your robes are green and purple, there's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the diamond bright, but mine are dull as lead. Alas, alas, how very soon this silly little fly, hearing his wily flattering words, came slowly flitting by, with buzzing wings she hung aloft, then near and nearer drew thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue thinking only of her crested head poor foolish thing at last up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast he dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlor but she ne'er came out again and now dear little children who may this story read to idle, silly, nattering words, I pray you ne'er give heed. Unto an evil counselor, close heart and ear and eye, and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To F. C by mortimer collins read for LibriVox.org by leonard wilson of springfield ohio to f c twentieth february 
1875. Fast falls the snow, O lady mine, Sprinkling the lawn with crystals fine. But by the gods we won't repine While we're together. We'll chat and rhyme and kiss and dine, Defying weather. So stir the fire and pour the wine, And let those sea-green eyes divine Pour their love-madness into mine. I don't care whether tis snow or sun or rain or shine, if we're together. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To His Valentine on St. Valentine's Day by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle February 2015 Oft have I heard both youths and virgins say Birds choose their mates and couple too this day But by their flight I never can divine When I shall couple with my valentine End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wind Hover to Christ Our Lord by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. I caught this morning morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dauphin, dapple dawn drawn falcon, in his riding of the rolling level underneath him, steady air, and striding high there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy. Then off, off forth on swing, as a skate's heel sweeps smooth on a bow bend, the hurl and gliding rebuffed the big wind. My heart and hiding stirred for a bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing. Brute beauty and valor and act, oh, air, pride, plume, here, buckle, and the fire that breaks from thee then, a billion times told, lovelier, more dangerous, oh, my chevalier. No wonder of it, sheer plod makes plough down sillion shine, and blue bleak embers, ah, oh, my dear, fall, gall themselves, and gash gold vermilion. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter's Turning by Amy Lowell Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Snow is still on the ground, but there is a golden brightness in the air. Across the river, blue, blue, sweeping widely under the arches of many bridges, is a spire and a dome, clear as though rings with ice flakes, golden and pink and jocund. On a nearby steeple, a golden weathercock flashes smartly, his open beak cock-a-doodle doing straight at the ear of heaven. A tall apartment house, crocus-coloured, thrusts up from the street like a new-sprung flower. Another street is edged, and patterned with the bloom of bricks. Houses and houses of rose-red bricks, every window a glitter. The city is a parterre, blowing and glowing, alight with the wind, washed over with gold and mercury. Let us throw up our hats, for we are past the age of balls and have none handy. Let us take hold of hands and race along the sidewalks and to dodge the traffic in crowded streets. Let us whir with the golden spoke wheels of the sun. For tomorrow, winter drops into the waste basket, and the calendar calls it March. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Witch Wife by Edna St. Vincent Millay 
Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle February 2015 She is neither pink nor pale, and she will never be all mine. She learned her hands in a fairy tale, and her mouth on a valentine. She has more hair than she needs, in the sun tis a woe to me, and her voice is a string of coloured beads, or steps leading into the sea. She loves me all that she can, and her ways to my ways resign, but she was not made for any man, and she will never be all mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.